And welcome everyone to the Riverside County Board Brief as we give you a brief look at what took place during today's Riverside County Board of Supervisors meeting and the special budget meeting as well as we're going to talk about in just a moment. My name is Pep Fernandez and join us here at the top of the show, Sharissa Leach. She is the TLMA Director, also Assistant CEO for the County of Riverside. And Sharissa, first off, let's talk about Diamond Valley Lodge. Now today we talked about it during the Board of Supervisors meeting. What is the current status on this project and what is it exactly? Diamond Valley Lodge is uh, first and foremost an educational opportunity. Uh, they, uh, there's an event center mm -hmm. and a golf course. So they have turned a, a very unique opportunity of the golf course into the ability to uh, house animals and have events with animals, teach people about the animals, and, um, and people can actually have experiences there. They've had weddings there, they've had special events, mm -hmm. fundraisers, and you can, you can actually watch the tigers as you're eating your meal or whatever events you have. And Sharissa, we're looking at some, uh, some video actually of Diamond Valley Lodge. So today specifically during the Board of Supervisors meeting, um, I wanna make sure we, we get this correct, but I guess there's a plot plan and also uh, a change in zoning that's going forward, correct? Yes. Yeah. yes, so today the plot plan was completely approved. There is a change of zone that goes along with it. The change of zone was required just so that they could have the menagerie part of it. The, everything else was already underneath the, the um, original permit. Mm -hmm. And now they're allowed to have the tigers. They can live on there. They can take care of the tigers on there. And it it's all be, will become, become permanent as soon as that zone, zone change is completed. Okay, very good. And, and finally, uh, just seeing a unique project like this in the county of Riverside, what's it been like working on this and, and getting it to the finish line for the public? So it's it's actually been a very interesting one. This is this is one that I can say I, we, I haven't ever seen or duplicated. So um, th th to have passionate people that are so passionate about their business and what they do, it's, it's really a fun thing to kind of help them get there. Mm -hmm. These aren't regular developers. These aren't people that have, that they've done this before. And so they're very excited. They finally get to live their dream mm -hmm. and it's, it's exciting to see them reach that. All right, Sharissa Leach, the TLMA Director and Assistant County CEO. Thank you, Sharissa, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, yeah, so we've been talking a lot about the Diamond Valley Lodge the last couple of weeks here uh, during the Board of Supervisors meeting. Now let's bring on our next guest, Jeff Green. He is the Chief of Staff for District 1, that is Supervisor Kevin Jeffries, talking about Lakeland Village and also uh, the Butterfield Trail. And, uh, and Jeff, during today's Board of Supervisors meeting, talk about what was, what was pushed forward in terms of the improvements for these projects. So what today was, was the installation or the purchase of the installation of a new decorative fencing along the front of the Lakeland Village Community Center that will be a pay tribute to the Butterfield Historic National Trail. Uh, the Butterfield Trail used to run right past the community center um, back when uh, the tigers, I think, roamed free in Riverside <laughs> County before they were put in uh, these uh, special places. But no, the, uh, the old stagecoach line ran right past the community center down what is now Grand Avenue. And at the beginning of this year, it was recognized as a national historic trail from San Francisco all the way to Missouri. And this is our way of recognizing that history mm -hmm. by putting in cutouts and some interpretive signs along with new landscape in front of the community center. So easily visible recognition and maybe, I don't know, improvements to make sure it stays that way? It's gonna make the, uh, it's gonna make the center look so much nicer from mm -hmm. the street. I mean, right now it's old 20-year-old uh, old school uh, chain link fence and some weeds. Mm -hmm. So this will be a nice black ride on iron fences and there'll be steel cutouts of stagecoaches mm -hmm. and coyotes and cactus and that kind of thing. So it'll, and some nice landscaping. So it'll definitely help the curb appeal a lot of the center. All right, very good. Jeff Green, everyone from District 1, the Chief of Staff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Uh, and if you've been watching the board meeting today on Tuesday, also on Monday, come on over, Michael Ambolo, Chief Finance Officer. We had our budget hearings on Monday, and it spilled into Tuesday as well as they go over the budget for the next fiscal year, and our Chief Finance Officer, Mike Ambolo. And, and Mike, um, you know, going over the the budget today, um, I think it was pushed forward towards the end of the month to be officially approved, but what took place during today's Board of Supervisors meeting in terms of next fiscal year's budget. Sure, absolutely. So it's an interesting time of the year for us. So we have submitted our recommended budget to the board. We presented it to them, as well as we heard presentations from various uh, county departments on additional items that they might want in their budget. From there, mm -hmm. today's meeting was for us to, uh, excuse me, to discuss whether or not we wanted to move forward with the, those revisions that were 
given to us in the board meeting mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, that proved today, mm -hmm. right? And as a result of that, we will then take the recommended budget as well as what's called an amendment report to the board on the 27th for their final uh, vote and adoption of that budget. When it's important that we do that because July 1st, we're gonna need that new money to start paying our bills, mm -hmm. right? So it's, uh, today was critical in the process and it went successfully. All right, uh, take us behind the curtain just a little bit in terms of getting to this point. I know it takes a lot of cooperation, I'm sure, between all the different departments uh, to have a budget that the Board of Supervisors are going to approve. Um, but we're almost to the finish line, and that's the good news, right? Oh, absolutely. This is a year-long process, so budget is never-ending, right? We started with our strategic financial planning that goes most of the year. That gets folded into the, 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 the beginnings of the budget and helps formulate the budget itself in order for us to even create the recommended budget. A lot of forecasting goes into that. A lot of discussion goes into that. We meet uh, very uh, with with all of our board members. We meet with all of our department heads. We meet with all of our ACEOs in order for us to get the right understanding of what their needs are and where the county is going. From there, we finally assemble that recommended budget book, which is a whole feat to get to. Once we get there, it's the home stretch, and that's what we reached uh, at this point and at this board meeting. We're at that 90% marker, 10% more. And I think you mentioned, I think it's June 27th, right, which is the uh, the board date when they'll come back and officially approve it for the fiscal year? That's correct. We actually uh, have to have it approved in, or uh, officially approved by the 30th of June, but we happen to have our board meeting on the 27th, so just a few days there to spare. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> and then after that, we move into a, uh, an official amendment phase and then the printing of the book for the final year, uh, or, or the calendar year for the state. All but right. it's a good time for us. I think it's a very, I, I know it's a very good book that we put together. Well, very good. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate the time. That's Mike Ambolo, the Chief Finance Officer for the County of Riverside here. Thank you so much. Uh, and also, we want to remind everyone that it's almost time for the 4th of July holiday. And if you light it, we will ride it. Check out this PSA from the, your team here at the County of Riverside. Every year, thousands of accidents and fires occur due to illegal fireworks and explosives nationwide. Those deafening blasts over our neighborhoods, while car alarms are going off and windows are shaking, our veterans and pets are traumatized. Riverside County has a zero tolerance policy for illegal fireworks. Anyone caught purchasing, lighting, or transporting illegal fireworks is subject to fines up to $5,000. So let's keep the fun and excitement of fireworks to the professionals and enjoy the many public fireworks shows throughout Riverside County. Remember, if you light it, we'll write it. And you'll probably see that campaign in a lot of different places, including billboards as well, just like last year. My name is Pep Fernandez. We always appreciate you watching the Riverside County Board Brief, and we will see you next time.